Dodge this. Good people of open art, today we're going to take a look at 10 use cases for Kling 01. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive in. We're going to go right up to the top under the video tab and select image to video. And the first thing I want to cover is under the video tab. Under the model selection, you want to make sure we have Kling 01 selected. And then we're going to go into the video tab. If you watched our launch video on Kling 01, I mentioned that use video reference wasn't working for me at the time. We're going to take a look at that today. And the first use case we're going to look at is generating a shot before or after an already generated video. So I created this very simple scene of a couple eating sandwiches on a bench. Nothing too complicated, right? And what we're going to do is slide that video into the upload reference area here. And under the prompt examples, if you select it, you'll see we have four options. Generate next shot, previous shot, video for camera movements, and reference video for actions. Let's start with next shot. And when we select it, we get a pre-made prompt and you basically just have to fill in the brackets, okay? So first we're going to reference the video source. In this case, it's called video one. Then it says, generate the next shot, describe the shot content. For the rest of the prompt, I use a seagull suddenly flies into the frame, steals the woman's sandwich, she is startled, and the man continues to laugh. You don't need a reference or element to do the video and you do have your options to do either a five or 10 second video and hit create. So what's happening here, it's continuing the scene based on my prompt. Let's go ahead and view it. We see a seagull is going to fly into the scene. It's pecking at her food, but he's still laughing. They're cracking up. Kind of works. I mean, it didn't steal the sandwich from her hand, but instead chose to just take a bite and they have a good laugh about it. Here's a different version that I found hilarious because watch the guy. He's just getting wolfed down his sandwich hole. And then, yeah, the seagull continues to bite into the sandwich. The girl reacts. So it works fairly well when it works. And I say that as a disclaimer that this video reference feature in theory is a good idea for, I would say, simple scenes that there's not too much going on. And you'll get best results when your characters are closest to the camera. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at generating a scene before the main clip, this time I had them approaching the bench, but we see the guy kind of looks different. I mean, it gets the general idea. We're lacking a bit of consistency in the characters, right? And then same thing here where the guy just doesn't look the same. Even the girl, I mean, the dress has changed too, but it's getting kind of the basic idea. And in terms of the prompt, it's exactly the same, except that now you're stating generate the previous shot. For the previous and next shot feature though, it does help to use a reference image or element to keep that consistency. Next, we're gonna take a look at using video as a resource for camera movement. I wanna show you Kling's example on their website here because this is sort of a key component of this working properly. We see here we have the reference image and the video they use for the motion. And as you can see, it's a very primitive 3D environment with basic shapes. 
and the motion is happening in 3D space. And as a result, on the right of the screen here, we see the camera movement mimicking this 3D space. And I show that for a reason, because if you are like a 3D animator and you have those type of video clips that you want to use for motion, I find it works best for that. Now, in my example, I created this video of a drone going through some very tight areas here and I wanted to mimic that motion and replace the drone. So what I had done was just took a screenshot of the first frame, brought it into Nano Banana Pro and prompted replace a drone with this superhero. So I'm going to go ahead and play it and you see that it mimics the motion very well. However, you'll see that his arms don't move. It sort of mimics what the drone is doing too. So although it mimics the motion of the camera, my subject is pretty static, right? The key for this to work properly is that whatever the subject is in the resource image has to be in a shape or similar in your reference image as well. And the one thing that I found pretty fascinating is that you see that the wings are pretty long, right? It's as long as the width of the video. In the beginning, it's kind of slow as if there's like collision detection, right? It's going slow into the little tight corners there and then it starts to speed up. I would say in this case, it works pretty well. It took me quite a few generations to figure it out because I tried different objects. I tried different sceneries. It just wasn't working the way I thought. And then I realized that in order for it to mimic the movement exactly, the environment also has to be very similar. Reference video for action, I find, is no different from if you use modify video. We open up the prompt examples here. It works very similar to modify subject, but there's a main caveat here. I've got this dance footage here with this woman busting a move. And I'll show you this example here. You'll notice there's quite a bit of distortion, some artifacting, and you're going to find this with many of the other video models where when there's fast action, things start to break down. You start to lose some details in the face and hands, especially. And even at half body, I think Runway Act 2 does half body very well, even at this pace. And that's a key factor here. The faster the motion is in your resource video, the harder it is for the model to keep up. But if our motion is a bit slower, then the model has more time to generate the frames more accurately with more detail. Now in this example, you can see our hands kind of deform a little bit and the facial features are much better than before. And even the hands, especially towards the end here, look accurate. You can even see her palm prints there. So generally speaking for fast paced action, it's going to be very difficult to get clear results. As you saw in the intro, this is how I kind of got away with doing, you know, this popular matrix scene of Neo, you know, doing this cool move. And it works because it's slow motion, right? Now, again, with the face, it kind of loses some details. But in terms of the body motion, it's actually very good and very accurate. Now to properly get the look and feel of the matrix, obviously I had to convert the characters that I was using to look sort of like Neo and Trinity. And the process is quite simple, especially with Nano Banana Pro and C Dream 4.5. The first thing I did was use a reference image of me here without glasses. And I took a screenshot of Neo on the ground here. I wanted to capture at least the general sense of his outfit. I didn't care if it was exact or not. I just wanted it to look similar. And the prompt was super simple. Place the outfit from image two on the man in image one. From there, I created a full body version with the prompt, the man is standing, plain gray background. I then used that image as a reference, prompted for portrait, angled side view, and followed that same concept to turn our CEO Coco into Trinity. Grabbed a screenshot from like a YouTube video she was doing an interview for and generated this. And don't worry, I had her permission. <laughs> Then I did a screen recording of the clip that I wanted to use. And I will tell you this part, doing it manually is not pleasant. 
In order for this to work properly, you're going to have to kind of do it scene by scene. You can't do one scene after the other. It's just the way the reference image or the element works. Then you would import your source video and reference image and simply prompt or place the man in video two with the man in image one. The intro, even though it was only one minute, took me quite a few hours to piece together because I had to cut every little scene that I wanted. So my advice to you is that if you're going to do something like this and you have multi shots, it's you have to do it shot by shot. Here's some raw footage of Kea, someone I used to work with quite a few years back when I was working with a talent agency. And this is a, a raw shot that I took of her. I had to reshoot it because you see there are people in the background. Now, you know, when I'm in the zone and kind of just working on the shots, sometimes you kind of blank out and you don't see those things. So did a couple retakes, but I always liked this shot but there was too much noise in the background. There's people and even a garbage can in the far distance. Using that clip as a video resource, importing in and prompting, remove the people in the background from video two. Many years later, now I have a usable clip that I could have used on her portfolio montage at the time. And I'd probably get rid of the garbage and recycle bins in the far distance as well. Virtual try-ons are getting even more popular now, especially with the latest models out. So to further develop this clip and to use more features of Kling 01, once again, I use Nano Banana Pro to swap out her faux fur coat to something that's not as bright in terms of color, a bit more complementary to the scenery. I use Nano Banana Pro for this, took a screenshot of Kea here and use this faux fur coat from Amazon. The prompt was simply replace the coat in image one with the coat in image two, remove the people in the background. So now we have a good reference image to replace the coat within the video using the same reference video that we just generated. And then bringing in the new reference image, our prompt would look like this. Replace the coat in video one to the coat in image one. And just like that, we have a perfect seamless virtual trial. Now what we can do is, uh, if I take this footage now, prompt for change the background in video one. We're going to tag the video with a busy city in New York. And as you can see, there's a lot of cabs as it would be in New York City. A lot of people. And yeah, I would say the masking even looks pretty seamless. There is still a bit of rim lighting from the previous video, but I could say it sort of matches because if you look at the buildings up here, it does look like the sun is coming from that direction, right? So changing the background is pretty seamless and we can even change the weather if we wanted to. And the prompt would be basically the same thing. Change video one to winter day snow falling from the sky. Now we do see all the snow even on the heads of people. We don't see the snow falling, but that's only because I generated only a couple. Now, if we look at a side by side comparison from the original to what we have now, there's so much you can do now with the capabilities of editing your video. This next shot, I wanted to add some special effects to it. We have this creature crawling out of a hole. The problem is he kind of just pops out of nowhere. Nothing happens with the ground. So I thought, Let's give it some sort of effect. So we'll bring in this video resource. And the prompt I used was make the ground crack in video one as dust and debris scatter. The character emerges from the hole in the ground as more dust comes out from within the hole. That should be spelled with no W. <laughs> and as a result of that prompt, this is what we got. Now, I didn't get the crack ground, but I got my smoke and debris visual effect, which is, I think, really cool. And then I got a second version that started with the hole being visible, which I guess I could cut out. But my point is, is that you can apply some sort of simple effect after you've generated your video and you feel like, hey, I think this needs a little something extra. 
Another good example of this is this shot that I used in a previous video where these two cars collide, but as they collide, there's really nothing much going on. And I wanted to kind of put some explosion effects, maybe some fire and some smoke. And the prompt, once again, is very simple. Add sparks, fire, and smoke when the cars collide. Now I'm prompting for when that's supposed to happen, but the one downside of adding visual effects is that you can't really tell it when to add the effect. So you will see in the beginning of the clip, it adds fire and smoke, but then as the cars collide, boom, there you go. So it works pretty well other than that first part. So I suppose I can cut that out, but it kind of looks cool too. Maybe something happened prior to that shot. I don't know, but it looks a lot more cooler now with the new special effects. If this was a shot that I was using for a cinematic sequence, typically for a shot like this, I'm thinking, oh, I want to see it in multiple angles. I'd use the footage we just looked at, bring it in as a video resource, and then prompt generate another angle slash composition aerial view top down in video one. Now it's not exactly aerial view or directly top down, but it gives you an overhead perspective. And once again, I am going to stress that sometimes it's a bit stubborn. You may have to generate a few times to get the right shot. I was actually pretty happy with this perspective. And I did a similar thing for this car sequence where it was like a front angled shot and prompted for it to be a bit more higher. So you can imagine you can take these two clips and cut them really quickly to get different perspectives, especially for like high action car scenes where you want to have multiple compositions. This is a great way to do it. I've mentioned this in previous videos. Start and end frame is the most useful feature of any video model that can support it. You can do so many things. For example, this product shot where I basically just have a starting image with the hand pouring the pop into the glass and then a finishing product image. And I'm going to show you how to do that very easily. Here's our starting image done in Nano Banana Pro. Our prompt is creative and modern product shot. The can is being held with a hand poured into a tall glass with ice. Pretty simple. And I also use this Kling 01 can that I made from the previous video as an Omni reference. And for the finishing shot with the same Omni reference, I prompted for a creative and modern product shot. That's it. And then we would bring in those images as our start and end frame. And the prompt reads, pouring a drink into a glass, transitions into a product shot, the neon lights glow and move in the background. I'll show you the second version that I did using this particular prompt. Looks very similar, has the same vibe, just a bit slightly different. For me, I would say probably the number one thing that I use start and end frame for are dynamic camera motion. In a previous video about Flux 2, I created this ending scene with this boy drawing in his sketchbook and the starting frame looked like this. And I wanted the ending shot to show the kid's drawing of his character and it also says Flux 2. And the prompt is simply a boy is drawing a superhero on his sketchbook. The hero is drawn poorly. The camera hovers over his book in a top-down view perspective. Here's the final shot. And I really love how it's an over the shoulder type of shot. And uh, yeah, it's just very dynamic, exactly what I had envisioned in my head. So there you have it, my friends, my personal top 10 use cases for Kling 01. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What is one of the favorite features that you like from Kling 01? And I wanted to say a quick thank you for bearing with the last video. I know I had some audio issues and never suspected as many people to comment on missing my voice. <laughs> and in case you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, <laughs> make sure to check out that video right here. And until that next video, video, my friends. Happy creating.